So I would like to start with my presentation which deals with uh, technical embroidery for e-textile. At first uh, I would like to just do a short introduction of our university and Pilsen. Then I will, I will give some more overview of, of uh, definition of smart textiles and e-textiles. Then I will focus on conductive threads which are essential for embroidery and at the end I, I would, I would uh, deal with embroidery and at the very end there will be the room for questions so I will be happy if you will have some questions and I will answer it. So our university is relatively young, it was founded in 1991 and currently it has uh, something like 4,000 and uh, half students uh, so we are we are based here in Pilsen. It's in the western part of Czech Republic near German borders, and our team is coming from a Faculty of Electrical Engineering. Our university has, has nine faculties, and we are situated in the main campus of our university, and we are situated situated here. Pilsen. Uh, was also a European capital of culture in 2015 as Maribor was and if I, if I have the right information also the Ghent is going to candidate for European capital of culture. So here there are some pictures from Pilsen, this is the historic historic main square, the museum, here the third largest synagogue uh, in, the, in the world and and this is the Gothic Church, new, muse, uh, new, new building of, of, uh, of new theater. And for, for, with, with Pilsen, it's connected to Skoda Company. Currently, they, are, they are produce uh, trams and trains and trolleybuses. The cars are, are, are uh, manufactured in, in other city. And uh, the Pilsen work well, it's, it's very famous product of Pilsen. It was the, 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 the first word Pale, uh, pale lager, which was brewed in, in Pilsen, and according to, to this to this uh, to this beer is also called this type of beer. Ninety percent of, of the beer in the world currently is is is, is pils or pilsner, how it's called. Uh, we are also have uh, at our faculty a research and innovation center of electrical engineering which was established in 2013 with the investment of 25 million euros. And there are three main, main groups. One is deals with transportation, second one with power engineering industry, and we are coming from the group which is called Printed uh, Electronic and Smart Textile, and this is our building of our research center. Now let's move to, to the Smart Textile and its introduction. So, with, with the smart textiles, they are connected many terms and I would like to clear it out uh, later on in my presentation, but at first I would like to play a short video how we, what we think what, what uh, smart textiles are. Hi, my name is Irka Navratil and I would like to talk to you about smart textiles. Maybe you heard about our technologies which increase firefighters' work safety. We spent a lot of time on their development and testing. Smart textiles can increase visibility of workers or allow them to see much better in difficult conditions. Elements of active safety can also be attractive and fashionable in design. We are extremely interested in development of clothing equipment for sportsmen which can measure heart rate or breathing frequency and breathing depth. Be smart and join us in the development of smart textiles. I'm sorry for probably the, the low quality of, of the video. I'm sorry for it. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. C can you still hear me properly? Is it all right? The connection? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, Currently, when we look at, uh, at, at, at the smart textiles, there are uh, several, uh, several products introduced to the market and it means that the standardization bodies are involved in the standardization of uh, smart textiles, though they are active. Currently, we can, uh, we can name several one. 
ISO, International Organization for Standardization, or European Committee of Standardization, which is called CNN, CN, sorry, and or American STM or American IPC, which is involved uh, in, in electronics normally, or American Association of Textile Colorists and Chemists. So, mostly the, the adjective smart or intelligent are mainly used uh, for marketing purposes, but also it, it means meaning uh, in definition. And I, I like the definition from, from ISO, which deals with smart textiles, uh, and it doesn't it, it distinguish it is smart textile product or intelligent, intelligent textile product or interactive textile product. Balls is interchangeable, so we can call balls it. And smart textile products, it's a functional textile product which interacts reversibly with its environment or responds or adapts to changes to the environment. So this is the essential of smart textiles. And I also like the another definition from CNN, from, from European Committee for Standardization, which says that smart textiles are textiles or textile material systems having additional intrins intrinsic and functional properties not normally associated with traditional textiles. So it means if we have some additional function which are not not uh, uh, not common for for uh, for traditional textile, so we can call it smart textiles. Smart textiles are very fast growing market. This is, currently, it's it's niche market, frankly speaking, but it's it has very big potential. In 2020, it it reached market about 2.5 billion euros, and it's predicted that in 2025 there will be over 5.5 billion uh, dollar market with the annual, annual, annual growth rate of 30% 30, 30%. and smart textiles are not only uh, textiles as electronic function it's uh, I, I need to point it out uh, they are also involved uh, the textiles with shape memory tech, uh, shape memory textiles or photochromic textiles or tetrachromic uh, thermochromic sorry textiles and when we look uh, on, on this relation between between uh, smart textiles and e textiles we can see that they are the the e textiles is a subset of uh, of uh, smart textiles and variables uh, in, in to to some to some extent has an inter intersection also with with e textiles. What is very important for for a uh, further boost of uh, of uh, e textile, especially, it's the further min min miniaturization of of electronics. And it's also uh, very important. Uh, that currently nearly all of us have smartphones because the smartphones can be used for visualization of measured data uh, or it could be used for, for communication either by Bluetooth or uh, 5G or another, another communication network. And we look on e-textiles. So according to IPC, e-textiles is a textile structure. It doesn't matter if it's fiber, yarn, fabric or finished product where is permanently integrated electrical or electronic functionality and they also they also define so-called e-textile variable so it's e-textile based end product which is permanently integrated with electronic and or electronic functionality designed to be worn on the body so it's essential and without with or without digital components so here in the picture you can see which which kind of uh, component sensors, uh, which kind of component uh, e-textile can have sensors, uh, communication units, storage, uh, data storage, uh, uh, also battery has to be there, actuator, actuator, sorry, uh, and uh, some some electronic unit where, where the data are processed. So the problem is that still there is enough uh, standards. So this 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 situation slows down the the, uh, the industrialization and commercialization of, of smart textiles, but the situation it's much better than than five or ten years ago. So the first standards are coming, and as I as I said, uh, 
several standardization bodies are involved in this process. Because uh, the standards are very important because they, they set the rules of the game for, for new markets uh, which wants to adopt uh, new technologies. So when we look on, on the e-textiles from, from the level of integration point of view, so we can distinguish or scientific research distinguish uh, three generation according to the level of integration. The first generation is, is a solution where, where the mostly electronics are just attached to, 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 uh, to apparel. So by, by means of some, some uh, pockets or, or, or snap, snap fasteners or, or Velcros and so on. So it's, I, I would say it's, it's a history. Currently we have more, uh, more experience, we have more experience with, with uh, second generation where the products embed the sensors in the garment. So there's some example here. And the third generation is the situation when the garment is, 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 is the sensor. So it could be either the, the whole the whole product would be based only on textile and textile sensors, or we can we can go farther. That uh, the sensors or or functions will be integrated just in into into the thread or thread-like structures. So this is more or less future that we will have uh, everything. Or for for instance, you can you can imagine that we will have energy hair harvesting system which will be just on on the thread. With this logic is also uh, go uh, a, a European Committee for Standardization, which suggested four integration levels for intended standard for e-textiles. So they, 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 they speak about uh, the, the first level of integration, which deals, deals with the removal solution. So it's, it's, as I said, this is the more or less the history when when there is the the, the, the electronics are removable and uh, they are connected with, with the textile by 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 pockets velcro and so on then the second level of integration is so-called permanent integration so the electronic device is attached to the textile in such a way that it can be removed so it means that it's embroidered sewn welded glued ultrasonic welded and so on the third level integration is mixed solution, so there is pos there are used the the, the both uh, uh, means of uh, of integration, permanent integration and removable solution. So some 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 uh, electronic parts can can be removed, such as battery or or some sensors which have to be calibrated. So there is an example of of, of smart firefighter suit which could be which could be used which which can be defined as, as a mixed solution of of, integ uh, of of the integration and the last but not least is the fourth level of integration which is called full textile solution so it means that all components of electronic equipment are made of textile or have a textile finish so there is the example we also uh, developed we call it uh, we call it a smart uh, bed sheet which which there are there are several sensors which can detect uh, the humidity movements of, of, of patients, so that's, that's that's possible to do it. So when we look on uh, e-textiles, uh, and namely on uh, on what have they have to to fulfill, so uh, they have to be they have to be convenient for for, for the user. So uh, they have to be they have to be uh, they have to be uh, lightweight. All the electronics which are integ integrated there uh, can be bulky. It has to withstand uh, uh, many washing cycles. It has to has uh, high mechanical durability, breathability. It has to comply with the norms and standards. And for if, if we are speaking about the protective clothing. It, they have to withstand harsh environment, and they they have also comply. If, if we are speaking, for instance, about the firefighters, they have to comply with uh, explosive atmosphere standards, which are very strict. 
and I would like to play a short video just uh, for to, to to you just to have idea which how harsh environment can be can be during during the the uh, five fighter intervention. Okay, so there are there are several challenges for e textiles. Still, it's what is annoying that we have to have battery. Mostly, we have to have removal battery when when we are when we are uh, washed uh, and the the smart textiles. And uh, there are still doesn't exist any harvesting uh, energy harvesting system which could cover. Uh, electronic uh, energy demand for 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 electronics. So photovoltaics or piezoelectronics doesn't doesn't uh, generate uh, enough energy to to feed uh, the electronics. So maybe in future it will be possible, but currently it's it's not. Uh, another challenge is inter interconnection. So without without good interconnection, we we don't have we can't say that we have e textiles because uh, without the stable contact, we we lose a function. So and currently uh, for interconnection, it's mostly used uh, the technologies adapted for from uh, from uh, from electronics such as soldering, and these these technologies are not compatible with with manufacturing. So it's also necessary to come up with new technologies. And what is also a problem that many many products suffer from from from, from lack of resistance to washing. So th this has to be also improved. Okay, so this was the introduction, and now we can move to to conductive threads, which are essential for 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 e textiles. So e textiles are, are are based on on conductive fibers or, or yarns, which can be uh, used with with another technologies uh, such as sewing, embroidering, knitting, or weaving. And what, what is necessary to focus, or or to 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 emphasize, sorry, uh, that uh, most of conductive yarns, which are produced now, are not not uh, used for for e textiles or smart textiles but they are used for anti static anti static application or electromagnetic field uh, shielding application or when we are speaking with yarn containing silver they are used for antibacterial application but still more and more uh, conductive yarns are used in textile in e textiles textiles applications such as heating is which is very popular now and for for what we we can use uh, conductive yarns we can use it for interconnection for heating we can we can design several sensors from conductive yarns temperature humidity strain capacity presence interruption detection tech, tactical uh, textile sorry sensors uh, we we can do textile electrodes uh, for for uh, for ECG for uh, for heart rate monitoring and so on we can we can make antennas and as I, as I said before anti-static shielding and also 
and uh, anti-static application. In my presentation, I will understand YARN as, as a generic term for continuous trend of, of textile fibers, filaments or materials, uh, which then is used for, for knitting, weaving or other technologies which can form textile fabrics. So there could be spun yarns, which are based on stable fibers, which could be which could be uh, artificial or which could be uh, organ which could have orga uh, organic origin, or there could be filament yarns, which are mostly which are mostly uh, synthetic. The thread, I, I will understand as as a, as a, as a it's a type of yarn which is intended uh, for embroidering or sewing by hand or machine. And when we look for here that there is the yarn and the depiction of the yarn and the depiction of, of, of the of the thread. And uh, in order to, to decrease the friction, so during during the embroidering and sewing, uh, the threads are mostly finished with with wax and uh, other lubric lubricants, silicon-based uh, lubricants, to to decrease the stresses which are involved during during the sewing in eye of of, of needle. Here you can see the overview of of uh, conductive fibers. So. So there, there you can see that the uh, staple fibers, uh, conductive staple fibers, um, or we can we can have the mixture of uh, non-conductive uh, and conductive staple fibers, continuous filaments, conductive continuous filaments, and metallized polyamide filam filaments, which are mostly used in in conductive conductive yarns. So when we are speaking about non-conductive yarns, there are, there are uh, two most uh, used configuration. Either it's twisting, uh, twisted from, from fibers into yarn or it's twisted uh, with, with filaments into a thread. When we look on, on the types of conductive fibers, there could, here is presented five types but there could be more, but this is the most common types which we can imagine. So the first type is, is the combination of conductive and non-conductive fibers which are spun into a yarn. The second type, they are used, the, they are used uh, synthetic uh, fibers or it could be filaments and uh, the, the fibers are, are non-conductive and the, the, the filaments are, are metallized or coated with a thin layer of, of metal. The, the third type, we call it hybrid, it's the combination when we twist the metallic filament and non-conductive filaments in so-called hybrid thread. Uh, the, the, the fourth type, is the combination when we combine the metallized filaments and in uh, metal metal filaments, or we can call it uh, microwires together, and they are they are twisted together. And the last uh, type type five is based on on non-conductive fibers, which are wrapped. In, in metallic metallic filament. So for embroidering, it's a very important characteristic which is called bending stiffness. Uh, because uh, it's closely related to, to the looping. And uh, looping is uh, something what is not desired because it can lead to tangling or even to thread breakage. So that's why the, there is there is uh, calculated the, the, the stiffness according to this equation. So it's, it's based on Young modulus. 
and this is very important characteristic of, of uh, sewing thread or embroidering thread. What is also important to, to consider when we are speaking about e-textiles is so-called linear, resi linear resistance. So electro electrical resistance, which is uh, which is uh, for, for which is used R as, as a mark of, of so it's 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 uh, calculated as a ratio of voltage and and current voltage and current and this equation uh, deals with conductance and the conductance is inverse to 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 resistance and we can also calculate the resistance according to this equation which is the product that is the resistance is also can be can be equal to a product of specific electrical resistance of material which uh, which say how conductive material is the best conductor is is uh, is silver and and the ratio of cross section of of the area of the conductor and the length of the conductor the the resistance is in ohm but we, when we are speaking if we, if we would like if we, when we want to characterize the the long threads it's better to say that the resistance is uh, some value for instance 4 ohms per meter so then linear resistance is ohm per meter so it means that that we are speaking about the resistance for, for the distance of, of one meter. And here, uh, so we can say that, that uh, the, the, longer, the longer thread is, the, the greater resistance, uh, resistance is. And the, the greater cross-section cross -section area is the the lower level of resistance is so this has to we have to bear in mind so for instance when we have when we have uh, when we have metallized fibers so the cross cross section is is uh, is smaller because they are conductive only only uh, in in a thin layer around around the thread but in contrast, it, when we use the, the, the hybrid threads, where are micro wires, so they are they are they are conductive in the whole cross section of of uh, of uh, of this 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 filament. So there are three main factors for which deep, uh, which are which are essential for for. Uh, uh, for resistance of the thread, so it's conductive material used. In many, 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 uh, they are mostly they are used the silver or, or copper. A percentage of the conductive fibers materials, and it's also the longitudinal. So it means how how it's long and the horizontal horizontal configuration. So it deals with with the cross section of of, of the conductor. Now, when we move to the type one, which is the yarn based on conductive and non-conductive fibers, so uh, mostly they are based on stainless steel staple fibers, which are which has really they are really fine uh, fibers with the diameters from which ranges from 5, microma, uh, five micrometers up to 12 micrometers and this, this, these fibers can be spun together with natural and, and synthetic, synthetic materials so uh, the application are mostly shielding or uh, ele electrostatic discharge application or dissipated uh, these are dissipative covers for explosive environment application because when we are look at the electrical resistance linear electrical resistance so it's relatively high because he, here there are, there are the, the ohms per centimeter so it means it's 8.4 kilo ohms per meter 
what is also possible that uh, we can we can twist it stainless steel filaments into a thread or they call it bundle and we can also use this 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 thread this uh, stainless steel thread which is based on filaments for embroidering and that the, there in, in this case they are used stainless steel filaments with a diameter from 12 to 14 micrometer, micrometers and we can have very good uh, electrical resistance which is uh, at the level of, of units of ohms per meter. The disadvantage of, of such, uh, such uh, threads is that they, are, they are have poor embroidery properties. So mostly low resistance to bending uh, compared to, to other uh, threads uh, such as hybrid threads or, or metallized polyamide threads. Now we move to the type 2, which, is, uh, which are metallized sun synthetic fibers. The, I would say the majority of, of conductive threads which are used in e-textiles are metallized synthetic fibers. Uh, mostly the synthetic uh, fibers are based on polyamide or, or polyester. They are used because they are they are they are smooth and it's, it's uh, very easy, or it's it's better for 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 coating. Application: the first application is antimicrobial antimicrobial uh, applications uh, in uh, in case of of silver uh, silver materials, or and another application is electronic uh, static discharge. Uh, application, electromagnetic shielding, and then the, the, there is heating uh, or sensors, textrodes, or also they are used for decorative purposes. So they have uh, several, uh, several advantages. They are, they are, they are uh, relatively, uh, relatively good in stretching. Uh, in terms of, of washing, they are a little bit uh, worse, but most of them they are a little bit worse because endurance, they, the endurance is about 30 cycles. But there are some exceptions, for instance, Amman Silvertech uh, yarn, which, uh, which can last uh, really about 100 washing cycles. The, the, another disadvantage of these threads is that uh, the linear resistance is relatively high. It ranges from 100 ohms per meter up to 1 kilo ohms per meter. So for many applications it doesn't matter, but, but for, 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 for some it's a uh, problem. For instance, if you want to have the, the, the electrode for heating elements, it's, they have to be really big. To have uh, good uh, good conductivity. So how, how they are produced? So they are they are produced by uh, so-called electroplating galvanization, or in uh, other term galvanization. So because uh, the the thread is not conductive, so at first they have to be they have to be uh, done the, the 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 first layer by 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 uh, by techniques like such such as chemical coating or etching or plasma pretreatment, and then it's it's followed the electrochemical deposition, which uh, can be done in electrochemical cell. Most of the material is is used silver, or in lesser lesser extent it's it's, it's copper because that there is the oxidation problem in oxides of copper is not very good. Uh, they are very, the they, their resistance is very high. Here we can we can say what 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 is what is the advantage of 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 uh, of the of the metallized fibers that they are they are conductive uh, of around of of their circumference. 
So you can see here, this is the cro cross section of two embroidered. This is the this is the the microscopy picture of the inter, inter, inter uh, of the crossing of of two two embroidered yarns, which were uh, which were uh, welded by by ultrasonic welding. So this is the the here you can see this is the first. First, uh, first yarn, and this is the, the second one on, 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 on the crossing. And here you can see this very, very nicely visible, the, the thin layer of, of, uh, of the silver around the circumferences. So this is the advantage because when we are speaking about the contacting, so it's, it's, uh, so the thread is uh, conducted, uh, conductive uh, on, on, around their circumferences. So the disadvantage, as I said, is relatively high electrical resistance, and another uh, disadvantage can be soldered. As I said, in many cases they are used the, the, for, for contacting or interconnection, the, the technologies which are used in electronic industry. There are many manufacturers, uh, I listed here some of them, which are quite active in this field, ecstatic for, for knitting uh, material, silver stuff, Statex, German one, Madeira, also German one, Amman uh, with, with uh, their products, silver tech. Uh, they are also used the metallized synthetic uh, fibers. So uh, here there is examples of, of such, such fibers which is produced by by uh, company Silver Silver Erstat. and when we are look at the linear electrical resistance, which are in ohms per centimeter, so so the 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 the, the, the resistance is relatively high. So mostly these these yarns are used for electrostatic shielding because uh, for another application in textiles, it's it's uh, not possible maybe for for textile capacitors. Now we move to, to the uh, third type of, 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 of the yarns, we, which we denoted as uh, hybrid conductive threads. So it's, it's a thread which is twisted from, from a textile filament and one or several metal microwires. So because here is also very hard to say where, where is the border between the metal microwire and metal filament, because it's uh, there is not strict definition, but in the literature there is said the the border is somewhere around 20 micrometers. So if if we have the the, the metal wire with a diameter of 30 micrometers, so it should it should be it should be used the term micro microwire for that, and if if it's uh, if it's uh, Below 20 micrometers, it should be metal filament used for for that. So we use uh, mostly the the, the microwires with we start is at the diameter of 20 micrometers and we go up to 30 micrometers. Uh, we, we I say we we develop this 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 threads or these threads are are produced by also other other manufacturers manufacturers uh, but we, we we work on our own uh, threads uh, with industrial company VUP so what is what is important here uh, that the the strength of, of the threads is ensured by by the textile part. And what is also very, very uh, challenging uh, is, is, uh, is uh, the characteristic of, of, uh, of the metallic filaments because uh, during, uh, during the embroidering, when, when the, the, the yarn uh, which includes the, the metallic microwires goes through the eye of, of, of the needle, there is a very big friction and there, there could be 
there, there could be uh, the temperature, local temperature up to up to 200, uh, 200 uh, centigrade. So that's why they are they are used the special special needles, which reduce the friction. So they are they are based with uh, titanium nitride, uh, or they, they they have they are covered with titanium nitride layer, in order to reduce this friction, and also to to withstand the abrasion because the the the, the, the metal wires are very abrasive. So the the threads are are done by by twisting, and they are they are they are, they are applied. Uh, clockwise uh, Z-twisting and counterclockwise uh, as, as, uh, as twisting as is visible and it is also visible on, on the on the on the thread. It's not also easy to 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 manufacture because mostly in uh, in textile industry everything what is conductive it is taken as impurities. So. If if you produce something and there there is something conductive, there are sensors for that, so machine stop. So you have to be special machines for 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 manufacturing of such threads, and also grommets very suffer because that there is very big abrasion abrasion resistance of such threads, and also there are uh, lots of problems with wire looping, so it all has to be has to be solved. So here are some examples for from the threads which are which were introduced uh, to the market uh, by by Clevertex company and we were involved in the development phase but there are there are also another another producers of such such threads, threads uh, uh, in the world so advantages uh, Hybrid threads, uh, we can say that have nearly the same mechanical properties as textile threads. So it could be they can be used for embroidering, weaving, and knitting. They also can be uh, soldered, crimped, and and uh, they can be produced in insulated and uninsulated uh, versions. They have high resistance to washing cycles. What are their disadvantage? They are not conductive around the, the entire circumferences as for metallized polyamides threads or yarns. So that, that's why it makes more complicated if when we want to, to contact them. So then it's better to, to have uh, threads with more wires. So we have, uh, we have threads up to 16 wires, which are integrated in, in one thread. So the another another producers, <clears throat> for instance, is Swiss Shield Company, which uh, mostly which which uh, which is focused on on application and electromagnetic uh, shielding. Here there is there is the, the list of, of several version of of the yarns, and you can see that the the, the, the linear resistance vary from uh, from uh, from the threads. Uh, with 16, uh, 16 microwires, which has uh, linear resistance uh, of 1.6 ohm per meter, and when we use the stainless uh, stainless steel wire in one, one one stainless steel wire, we can have the linear resistance 2.4 kilo ohms per meters, and this this uh, this uh, this thread we use we we use as a sensor wire sensor one for for temperature sensor. So these yarns are fully compatible with all standard uh, textile procedure and processes and it withstand uh, nearly 80 washing cycles. Here are some microscopic pictures from uh, uh, scanning electron, electron microscope. Uh, here we can see the, 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 the thread where it's integrated just one stainless steel microwire with with a diameter of 20 micrometers this uh, this this uh, thread we use as a sensor bar sensor one for for temperature sensor 
if that there is uh, there is a thread where I used uh, brass microwires for one here there is uh, the the example when when we have uh, several several plated copper microwires for several uh, plated copper microwires uh, in conductive threads and this is this is the insulated uh, insulated microwires so so you can it's here so it's not so you can distinguish between between the non-conductive uh, non uh, material and and the, the the microwires only the diameters differs because the diameter of, of textile material is around 14 point micrometers so here are some some example of the usage this is the sensor one which was just one chromical stainless steel here uh, the, the capacitive uh, capacitive uh, uh, capacitive buttons with uh, with four uh, four microwires uh, several several plated microwires and this is this is the the antenna which is embroidered from from uh, from from the hybrid thread which is which uh, contains contains four uh, four brass microwires so here are some statistics from from uh, washing cycles so here you can see this is the the the, the hybrid thread which uh, which contains silver plated copper microwires so it can be stands up to up to around something like 80 80 80 80 uh, 80 washing cycles so this is the resistance in milliohms and here there is the example of of, uh, of the washing resistance of a very common material silver erstat so it what well, is uh, silver metallized polyamide yarns now we move to to, to another uh, type where where we come where, where it's possible to combine the non-conduct uh, where we combine the poly uh, sorry uh, metallized polyamide uh, filaments and uh, the hybrid microwires so then it could be improved the 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 the, the, the threat uh, contact uh, contacting uh, uh, possibilities uh, because it's it's uh, the then it's conductive uh, in, in, in around the entire circumferences of of, of the thread. The the next uh, type is is, uh, is five. When uh, a non-conductive yarn is wrapped in metallic filaments, mostly this is used for for decorative purposes. Such thread is not possible to use for embroidering. Because it, it would not be too possible to embroider uh, to embroider such such thread, but uh, it's possible to to have another threads. For instance, here there is a thread uh, where is well, which is based on on the on the lycra lycra filaments, which are which are wrapped with 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 hybrid threads. And such sensors can be used uh, as a sensor, strain sensor, because uh, we, when, when we when we stretch such such uh, thread, the inductance of such thread thread, uh, thread is is uh, changing, changing with 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 the elongation of of the thread. The another uh, type of, of, of the thread, uh, they can be used on uh, on conductive. Uh, they can be based on conductive polymer threads. So mostly the polymers are are uh, used as as uh, insulators because they are very good. But uh, they were they were they were discovered of uh, of uh, those three men, which they also was awarded by a Nobel Prize with that. They discover uh, conductive polymers, and this is possible when when is uh, meet the necessary condition when the bonds between the carbon atoms are alternatively alternatively sorry alternatively uh, single and double single and double, and this is this is called as uh, conjugated uh, double bonds. 
and in this in this state it's possible that that uh, the the plastic which are normally in the, uh, act as insulators can be can be can be conductive so and in this case they act as a semiconductors it's very easy to to process uh, them and also they they, they uh, very easily can change their structure so we can call them as as a, as a smart materials so here are some examples, mostly we have, we have just, uh, just demonstrators from, from basic research or some, some prototypes from pre-application research. Here that there is, there is a kind of stretch electrochromic, electrochromic spandex fiber electrodes. You can see here the letters which are changing with a uh, changing in colors with oxidizing and uh, reducing uh, state from from uh, red to blue that the, the, there is a polymer solar cell which is based on 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 one thread like structures so and they are they are used uh, not just uh, just uh, one a conductive polymer such as p.pss which is very very typical but they are used also carbon nanotubes and also also uh, uh, microvirus uh, nanomicrovirus fibers so i would conclude that, that the most uh, successful application for for polymer filaments based uh, yarns are, are thermometers currently there are also many Many research has been done in terms of conductive threads, which are based on carbon nanotubes and metallic nanofibers. Mostly, this this uh, this thread suffers from a relatively high linear resistance. It's around 800 ohms per meter. And there are some some applications which are which are which were developed, and they 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 deals with with heated fabric applications. So currently, it's I would say it's it's not the topic of of uh, of uh, big uh, industrialization, but maybe it will come in in in, in next years, because that's really intensive research in this in this field. Here there is some some example of of, uh, of such thread. Uh, we were also involved in 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 the development of that, and this thread is based on 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 fixation of of uh, carrier doping sulfur uh, aromatic groups which are depicted here into the textile fibers uh, of yarn structure and then subsequently they, they, were, they were done in situ polymerization of, of uh, teofen based uh, monomer and here there, there is the result of, of that it, it was it was used the cotton thread uh, thread uh, for, for, for this uh, modification, which was done by in situ polymerization, and uh, here here is the the the, the application of, of such threads is is as is, is a thermometer, and as I said, this uh, this polymer conductive these conductive polymers are 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 act as semiconductors, so we we get this this uh, this textile base. Uh, negative uh, the, the thermi thermi uh, thermistor uh, thermistor with with uh, negative uh, uh, temperature coefficient. So it means that with with a higher temperature, it has uh, lower resistance. So that was all from uh, from uh, conductive yarns, and now we we can we can dive in em embroidering. So when, when we when we look on on uh, conductive flat fibers, so there are there are there are fabrics which has two dimensions which are proportional, and, and whose thickness is is with respect to to other two dimensions negligible. So we can distinguish uh, between uh, amalgam woven and non-woven and knitted sub uh, knitted uh, knitted fabrics. 
But when we are when we when we are speaking about the flat e-textiles, there are more options. So the the uh, they could be either knitting conductive threads, uh, uh, which are knitted in in uh, we are we are integrated into the knitted knitted fabric. So here you can see this 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 uh, these black stripes are are. Uh, are made from 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 conductive thread, or it could be non bones which 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 are which are electroplated by some materials. In this case, it's it's copper. Or we can embroider some uh, some some pattern. So this is the topic of, of this this uh, presentation. Or what is very related to that, uh, it's possible to to fix wires. You know, on the conductive fa fabrics with with a thread this this technology is called tailored tailored fiber fiber placement technology or it could be used uh, weaving technology which was very very nicely presented uh, on monday by by benny or uh, we can we can also print it on uh, conductive paste or, or inks on on textile substrates so I mentioned the, the the tailor fiber placement, or sometimes it's also called wire laying technology. So it's it's the technology which was uh, originated in Dresden in the 1990s, and the, for for this technology they are used also embroidery machine, such as Tajima CS, uh, ZSK. And there, 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 there is the rowing material, which is uh, we, uh, we, which is fed from from bobbin here, and this material is fixed by by by, by the stitches, zigzag stitches to to the to the textile materials. So what is important that that the that the, the head, which is equipped with with the rowing roving bobbin this one and with with, with the tube and with uh, with the with the guided element can be can be rotated freely uh, freely uh, through uh, 360 degrees so and and the the table is moved in the x axis and y axis and here this is the textile substrate and this is the needle and this is the zigzag stitches, which is uh, fixed uh, the the rowing material. So they can be different materials. So we can we can conductive. Uh, we we can make the interconnection of of some some electronics uh, modules with wires which are stitched by zigzag stitch, or we can fix some some uh, special material if, if if we if we for instance want to have the strain sensors this is uh, the example of nitinol wire or for for cooling application it's possible to fix in such tech by, by this technology of wire laying the tubes and what, what is mostly used it's uh, it's the the fabrication of carbon preforms from uh, from carbon fibers, which are used for 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 creation of, of composites, very and we can we can change the direction of of, uh, of 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 the fixation of the fibers, and we can we can really uh, increase their their mechanical mechanical strengths by by this these directions. So here, just for imagination, there is the example of of. Uh, such uh, placement of uh, of the fibers from the University of Stuttgart.
So here you can see the rolling material. Okay, so this was just to have the imagination. And here, the, another one uh, for ETXL application. This is the, the Tajima, Tajima machine, which uh, produces the, the heating elements by this uh, wireline technology. So you can see it's relatively fast. It's also used uh, in practice in many products it's done by that. So it's very, it's related to embroidering, it's very similar, design is very similar to embroidering, and you can see that it can be different patterns, different materials which can be, which can be used. We are spread, so you can see whatever. And you can see here that the process be done it's scalable it can be done in parallel and when we when we look on the embroidering embroidering technology of conductive fibers so uh, as you could see uh, in the previous video there could be the the tables with dimension up to two meters up to 2.5 meters so it could be done very very large patterns there are several several uh, Automated machines such as Tajima uh, or Japanese Tajima or German ZSK or many semi-industrial machines such as Brother, Bernina, Faf, Janome, and many others. And we have to we have to we have to realize that there is a big difference between decorative embroidery and functional embroidery. Uh, so, sometimes the, the embroidery uh, with uh, of, of with, uh, with electronic uh, conductive thread, uh, with electronic components, it's called embroidery. And the, where is the difference? Because when, in case uh, of decorative embroidery, when the, the thread breaks, the machine goes back a few, sim few centimeters backwards and then continues with embroidering. But this is not possible with, with uh, technical embroidery or something called functional embroidery, because in this case, it, it, it loses its function because it breaks the circuit and it's not possible to fix it such, uh, in such way. So, functional embroidery is much more demanding in terms of, of sewing, sewing uh, settings. We have, to, we have to embroider it more slowly, the patterns than if we embroider decorative patterns. So for embroidering, mostly it's, it's used uh, conductive threads or yarns, but also it's possible to, to use uh, twisted metallic filaments. This is, uh, th these filaments are uh, sometimes used for, as a collecting electrodes for, for, for heating heating uh, heating uh, textiles uh, for for embroidering you see use lock stitch so here you can see the, the process and this process is very demanding for 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 the thread because from the mechanical point of view and from also from, from the point of view of friction. So when we stop it, so so and we have to also realize that that the the the, the final length of, of, of the upper, it's the yellow one, and, and the lower sewing thread depends on the stitch tightening. So it it can differ. So it can be here, this the, the, this 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 contact, or it could be here. It depends on the tightening of the lower, of the bobbin thread and an upper thread, a top thread. And it's also we have to realize that uh, that there is difference 
where the, the forward and the reverse stitching is not the same. The quality of not, not the same. So when we when we when we embroidering in the forward direction, it's much better th than if we if we if we uh, embroidering in in backwards direction. So we have to also bear in mind. And when we ranked the textile te techniques according to the conductive stress loads. So I mean the the how how stressful is it for for the thread for for the thread or yarn? So the the most demanding is embroidering. It's most stressful because that there is there is the very high friction in the needle. So where where there could be uh, temperature local temperature up to two hundred degrees of centigrade. There is also very very big mechanical for forces during the the during the lock stitch. Uh, creation and also there there is uh, the embroidering is also suffer from from uh, from uh, big abrasion during during uh, during the usage the knitting is is not is, is better in this in this term weaving when we are speaking that we will insert the conductive threads into the warp it's much better and the, the the best from from the point of view of of, of the of the of the load is, is wire laying technology so here there there is there is uh, there's the picture of of our semi automated uh, machine which you will see in in, in my colleague's presentation in, in the next section so where there is there is the the embroidery frame here we we put uh, the the textile substrate and here there is the moving table so this this table can 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 move in in forward backward direction in the left and right direction and as i said the quality of embroidering differs with with this uh, with this uh, uh, embroidering uh, direction so we have to bear in mind during uh, during also design of the pattern and the, the needle is in fixed position, so only only the, the table is, is moving. So here there is there is just for <laughs> So we right here at the ID Tech X show. And who are you? My name is Topher Anderson and I'm a textile engineer here with ZSK. So what is ZSK? So ZSK creates different embroidery machines for customized applications. So e-textiles applications, composites applications, different high-tech applications that might use different types of textile engineering or flexible substrates. So this is an e-textile machine? So this is a traditional embroidery machine that we've converted into different types of e-textiles to be able to run different samples from flexible circuits to different types of sensors. Yeah, so ZSK company is very active in, in embroidering of, of e-textiles. So you can find more materials. Here, there, there is, uh, there, 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 there is. You can see the the software environment of of embroidery, but this will be the topic of my colleague. And now, I would like to conclude. What are the, the pros and cons of uh, cons uh, of embroider uh, embroidering technologies? So, advantages that uh, it is possible to do a two-dimensional conductive pattern, very, very, very 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 quickly it's very easy to customize it so uh, it's the the machine conf reconfiguration is very 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 quick because it's digital embroidering it's possible to use multiple threads at, at once during one embroidery so when we are speaking about the tajima zsk machine it's possible to stitch over each other so it's very important when we when we want to uh, form insulated bridges, non-conductive insulated bridges. But what are the disadvantages? Functional embroidery is, is slow compared to other technologies such as knitting or weaving. Okay, it's scalable, it, it can be done in parallel, but still it's, 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 it's slower. Uh, the, as I said, the embroidery is the most stressful for, for the conductive threads. So they are, they, there is a high friction forces in the eye of the needle, high tensile forces of, of the hook during, during the formation of the lock stitch, large uh, thread bands during the sewing. And the embroidery is, 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 is less abrasion resistance 
in comparison to 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 woven uh, textiles or knitted textiles. So and it also has uh, less resistance to washing. And here there are uh, in few seconds I will show you some some examples of our realization. So here there's some capacitive buttons. Here there is the embroidered RFID tag. Here you can see the embroidered temperature, large area temperature uh, sensors, which is also uh, used in, in, in fire smart, smart firefighter suits. And here you can see the calibration curves, the, the, the advantages of such sensor that can sense the temperature for, from large area for, for, and for protective closing uh, with, uh, with thermal risk. This is the advantages. This is the advantage. Here, there, there is the example of of, uh, of uh, heated embroidered heated textiles with integrated with integrated uh, thermometer. So you can have the feedback. So the thermometer here, the different one. The thermometer is the yellow one. So you can you can have the control. What is the the real temperature of of uh, of the heated heated textile? Here there are the examples of, of, of the antenna. So we are focused on development of type by either dipole or bow tie antennas, which works at the frequency 868 megahertz. We have also the patent for, for the for for the fabrication of so-called uh, uh, hybrid hybrid antenna, which combine the, the printed layer, embroidered layer together. Here you can see the the the, the reflection coefficient. Uh, we, we, you can see the dependencies of uh, SS11 uh, parameters, which deals with the reflection coefficient or return loss. And here you can see uh, the textile dipole antenna with, with interposer. So this is all from me. So thank you very much for, for your, your attention. And if there is any question, it will be my pleasure to answer it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Radek. Very interesting presentation. I think uh, both for a student, but uh, for us, uh, smart textile are very, very interesting and easy uh, and involve a lot of innovation and uh, intelligence, I think, <laughs> from, from the researchers. There are some questions, please. No. Um, now uh, we uh, pass to the next. Uh, uh, next. Uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, next. I'll finish my my sh uh, sharing of my my screen. So once more, thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you again, uh, Radek. Yes. There are some questions, please. No. Now uh, we pass to the next uh, uh, module. Uh, this mod the title of this module is Practical Org. We speak uh, also about the embroidery. This module will be sustained by uh, Mrs. Thomas Bletcher and John uh, Rebon. Yes, please. that's me. So I will. You can start. I will try to share my this practical work. screen. So just only check if if you can see uh, my my presentation, my desktop, and if you can. Yes. Hear me. Yes. Okay. So in, if it's okay, so I would like to I would like to continue with this uh, with this uh, mo module regarding the yes. design and modeling on embroidery structures, and in that time I would like to make such brief tutorial or practical practical course where you and you will see how to make the software how to make the program for the embroidering or to to make the design of the embroidering so first of all there is my agenda for today's presentation so at the beginning i will just give you some information regarding the design and digitizing of the technical embroidery mainly in the field of the theory so what is behind then I will go to the practical examples. I will try to show you three really extra simple uh, designs for, for the placement of the small electronic components. So, so making or embroidering of contact pads for these small electronic components. 
which are the basic for some extra electronic functionality which can be placed on the textile. Then the contact pads for large uh, of larger dimensions, mainly for the contacting of batteries or some dis dis displacement contacts or something like that. And also I will show you how to make the parallel conductive paths which are not connected together, so which keep some distance between and not making the short circuits. Uh, after that, I will make some practical demonstration in the software, in the free software like Inkscape and Inkstitch. Then maybe if there will be some time, I will also show you the demonstration video, which we prepared for you as a study material. And if there will be some other questions or, or discussion, so I will be happy to answer. So first of all, the design and digitizing of technical embroidery and the theory which is behind. So if you want to make the technical embroidery, so it means to, to embroider with some materials which have some electrical function. So for example, the conducted threads, you really need to have the design of the pattern itself. So at least to have some idea how you, your design uh, should look like. Then you have to have the software for embroidery digitization. It means to, to transfer the, your design into the machine, into the embroidery machine, which is the third requirement you have to have. So you have to have some, at least hobby or semi-industrial or even industrial uh, embroidery machine. And then, of course, you need to have uh, this electrical conductive threads. So in that case, yeah, you can see in the picture below the, the thread what was already introduced by, by Radek Sokup in the previous presentation. There can be many of that uh, conductive thread, uh, but this is the typical one which we are very often using for the embroidery, technical embroidery, as you see on the picture uh, on, on the top of the screen. And as also Radek said, there is a really strong signi and significant difference between technical embroidery and conventional decorative embroidery. So it means that it's really necessary to have the particular knowledge for technical embroidery, and I would like to give you this knowledge in the presentation. So first of all, what's the difference between technical embroidery and conventional embroidery? Probably the most of you are uh, textile experts or textile engineers or will be textile engineers, so you probably know very well the decorative embroidery. So it, it, it is uh, the, the most important thing for decorative embroidery is to reproduce, to make the, the textile reproduction of some image or text on the, on the textile substrate. So it means to bring some visual impression, which is usually colorful, which is nice for, for looking and also have good touch features and smooth surface. This is the important thing for, for the decorative embroidery and to be visibly nice, it's usually using many color threads and also different stitching types. So you are able to produce such kinds of text or pictures as you can see there on the, on the left picture. In the technical embroidery, the basic and the most crucial thing is its function functionality. So it means that we need to have defined and reproducible electrical parameters of embroidery patterns, of embroidery thread. And what is also very important, the reliability during the use when we are using it and also during the maintenance, mainly, mainly during the washing cycles or, for example, in tumble dryer or something like that. So it means that we need to keep the continuity of the conductive thread without any breakage of microwires or, or mechanical coating, uh, electrical coating or conductive coating on the, on the threads. Uh, so usually we are using only a few different type of threads, mainly just one, one type of thread for, for, the, for the technical embroidery. And uh, the conductive thread can be used as a top thread or as well as also on the bobbin thread. So we can use it only on the top, only on the bobbin or combination of both. Usually it's beneficial to use the combination of both bobbin and top thread because you can double the, the electrical conductivity because you are using two conductive threads instead of one. So there you can see in the picture below uh, such, uh, sorry, such uh, pictures of some technical embroidery. There is some electrical circuits with some, some, some components or this is some, some heating, heating textile, which is very common for, for technical embroidery. 
So, as I said, the principle is similar and equipment is also similar, but there are some, some technical issues you have to overcome. So, the technical embroidery have to create really continuous conductive paths. So, no interruptions are allowed, are, uh, cannot be there. So, if the thread breakage occurs, so it means that you lose the functionality of the electrical circuit. So, there is not permitted to to make any wire breakage or thread breakage. It's not an issue usually in the decorative embroidery where, where, where the machine goes back, makes some, some lock stitch or tie-in tie stitch and continue with the, with the thread without any, any problem. In case of technical embroidery, it's not, not allowed. Uh, there is also very important that the length of the path you design and after that you embroider is also very important because uh, as also Radek said in the previous presentation, the resistance of the of the of the pattern uh, is done by its its uh, length. So it means longer pass means higher electrical resistance, which is usually not not welcome. And longer pass also means higher consumption of thread, and because the the, the conductive threads are usually quite expensive compared to to conventional embroidery threads, it also uh, have to be taken into account. And what is also important is the direction of embroidery itself, because uh, if you are embroidering in one direction and other direction, the consumption of the thread is slightly different, and also the resistance, the final resistance, could be, could be different. So it's very important to know how your pattern will be embroidered, because then you have to calculate or you can calculate the consumption of the thread and also the, the final electric resistance of the, of the thread itself or embroidery pattern. Very important is also the fineness of the thread. It means mainly the, its optical diameter. So you have to know the optical diameter of the thread, mainly if you want to make nice filling of the areas, for example, for contacting components or something like that. So you need to know the diameter and then you can uh, select uh, the proper distance between, between the individual, individual uh, threads, which will be embroidered to fill it the area well. And also it's, it's important, the embroidered speed, because really it's very demanding for, for the, the conductive thread to survive the path in the embroidering machine and it's very beneficial to, to, to reduce the speed of embroidering, for example, to 300 or 400 stitches per minute compared to conventional embroidery where you can see, for example, 900 or even more stitches per minute. So, so it's imp important and, and very beneficial if you can reduce the speed of the embroidery to reduce the risk of uh, micro wires break or the, the, the metallization of wires break. So the quality of embroidery for sure depends on the choose of the textile substrate. Usually it's good if you have quite dense uh, weave substrate, ideally it will weave or dense plain weave substrate with the with the density something like 200, 250 grams per uh, square meter to be sure that the, the textile substrate is robust enough, uh, enough dense and that there will be no changes of dimensions during the, the during the embroidering or some some mechanical deformation during the the embroidering. The choose of the thread is also very important. Uh, so not only the the optical diameter, its structure and composition is important, but also also the if if you want to use it only as a top top or needle thread or as a bobbin thread. Usually, if you are using as a top thread, you need uh, you have really more requirements on on the thread itself, mainly in case of the breakage or some or mechanical damage because it's more more uh, demanding, I would say. Uh, in case of bobbin threads, it's usually easier, but in some combinations, as I said, it's beneficial to to use conductive thread both as a top and bobbin thread. Sometimes, mainly in the in the in the decorative embroidery, uh, the people are using so-called stabilizer, which is the material usually 
uh, it's it's uh, non-woven fabric uh, polyester based usually which is put under the embroidering pattern to make more accurate uh, accurate uh, stitching process without any puckering or stretching which can occur in case of technical embroidery we usually are not using this kind of stabilizers and we usually using more uh, robust or more more dense uh, basic textile substrate. Uh, it's also important the choice of the embroidery machine and setting all the embroidering parameters. Mainly, as I said, the speed of the embroidering is important, but also the the setting of the tension of the of the top and bobbin thread is very important for for really really nice embroidering without any breakage of the of the thread. And what is also important, the, the, the needle itself, because you, as, as in, in case if you are, if you are embroidering with the metallic wires, which are integrated in the thread, you have really big friction there. So you need usually special needles, which uh, special surfaces, which are very hard, such as titan nitride subs, uh, needles or something like that. So the the size dimensions of the needle eye is also very important for for well embroidered uh, embroidering of the technical technical uh, embroideries if you want to make a design of the technical embroidery usually you need three independent steps or you can divide it into three independent steps the first one is uh, to have some idea of the pattern what you want to embroider so usually it's some idea in your brain or hand sketch or picture of the, of the circuit you want to you want to embroider. The second one, the second step is to design this pattern in 2D vector graphics with really precise dimensions uh, based on the function you you require. And the third one is the so-called digitizing of the vector graphics. It means to transfer this. Uh, 2D vector graphics to the file format which is compatible with a particular embroidery machine you want to use. And uh, you probably know that uh, the, every single producer of the embroidery machine using different embroidery stitch file format. So there you can see some examples of that. that for example, the embroidery machine Bernina, what already the colleague uh, Radek in the previous presentation uh, showing using the embroidery stitching format .art. The Brother, which is very common embroidery machine, is using the PES file format. There is a, for Tajima, different one, for Melcro, another one, uh, Husqvarna or Ta Genome, also using the different uh, different file. So you have to have some software which transfer uh, the 2D vector graphics into the digitizing form compatible with, with the machine. Regarding the embroidery design, uh, the, it's the basics of the technical embroidery to have some, some, some graphical design of what you want to embroider. And uh, if you want to draw something in, in, in such kind of uh, graphical design software, you can use many of the existing vector graphics format, uh, uh, programs. There are universal vector graphics softwares, probably the most known is CorelDRAW, Adobe Illustrator, Visio. Usually you have to pay for that because it's quite complex, big softwares and quite also expensive. Then you can also use the so-called proprietary softwares, which are usually delivered together with the, with the embroidery machine, if you buy, buy some, some of them. Or you can buy, buy extra software together with the machine. And fortunately, you also have a big group of free vector graphic softwares, such as LibreOffice, Draw, Inkscape, and other. And you can use this software also for the graphical design of your, of your embroidery, which can be free. So for that purposes and for the purposes of this course, we decided to use the Inkscape software, Inkscape free vector graphics, which is as I said, free, which is uh, which can be downloaded for multi multi platform. So it means that it can work not only for Windows but also for Mac iOS, uh, Linux, and many other softwares. 
probably you know it very well because it's quite widespread it widespread it uh, software which is open source so it means that you can you can also program some extensions into it so for the practical practical course uh, it's recommended to already install this uh, this uh, inkscape software where you can see the, the the link for for the downloading of that probably i believe that this is quite spread it, widespread this software so maybe you are already using it for other purposes but in case of this course we will use this this software the next uh, step is uh, the digitizing of the embroidery itself so as i said it's the software which converts this vector graphics to embroidery format again there exist many of the digitizing programs which can be used usually uh, again you can divide it into two groups the first one is, is the universal software which is sell independently on the machine and the, the most important and spread it softwares are hedge or embird or also embroiderer but there are also some free alternatives like the ink stitch and i will show you later on uh, why we decided to use just this ink stitch software and again there are the proprietary software which are usually supplied with the specific embroidery machine uh, for example the brother uh, embroidering machine are using software pe design bernina uh, manufacturer is using the Artlink software, ZSK is using the IDS system, and Tajima, uh, the software uh, which is called DG. Uh, so for the purposes of this course, we decided to use the Inkstitch. Uh, Inkstitch is an open source uh, platform based on Inkscape, so it's like an add-on to the Inkscape. So if you already have installed Inkscape, you can just only install the, the another tool into the the inkscape and you will have there this option for design and digitizing of this digitizing of the of the vector graphics so uh, this is the logo of the of the ink stage uh, software and there is the link for for the downloading of it again i can show you just the the, the page where you can see the ink stage ink stitch and you can download uh, the you can download the the software and get it into the into your inkscape inkscape program so i really recommend to to do it because later on i will show you how you can work with this ink stitch plugin in 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 inkscape uh, if you want to uh, make the, this technical embroidery you usually have to keep in mind uh, some uh, basic rules or some some basic information regarding the the design of the of the vector graphics for example that if you want to draw or if you want to prepare some some structure of a more complex electrical circuit so usually not it's not possible to just make the crossing of Two conductive threads because if you make the crossing of two conductive threads usually it make the the risk of short circuit so you have to design it in different way for example not to make the the the, the exact uh, pure crossing of two conductive threads uh, also no interruption in embroidery pattern are allowed uh, sorry are allowed so it means that if you are uh, drawing one circuit or one line and then you will follow with another one uh, and without any any mechanical connection so there is a risk of loosening the connection when you embroider two independent patterns i will show you later on during the practical during the practical uh, examples there are also some technological limitations of uh, embroidery for sure mainly the resolution of the embroidery so it means the minimal spacing between two embroidery lines i would say uh, to to reduce the risk of some 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 short circuit so usually it's something like one or two millimeters depends on the quality of embroidery depends on the the quality of machine and also the thread and there are also other technical limitation like maximum size of the embroidery frame so every uh, embroidery frame has some limitations 
usually if you are using some hobby machines or semi semi automated semi professional machines usually the size of the of the frame is limited uh, starting from 10 times 10 centimeters to something like 30 or 40 centimeters times uh, 20 centimeters but for sure there exists also big embroidering machine where you can embroider for example the whole flag uh, so it means that it's something like two meters per one meter or even more uh, regarding the design and digitizing of technical embroidery, I would like to show you three practical examples, which will be really necessary for designing more complex uh, circuits or patterns. First of all, it's a contact pad for small electronic components, contact pads for larger components or, or of larger dimensions, and as I said, contact pads for uh, with, with conductive uh, passes. So first of all, I would like to start with the contact pads for small electronic components. And what's, what are these small electronic components? Probably if uh, you are at least some, somehow, uh, somehow introduced into electronics, so you know that there exist uh, small electronic components which are placed in your mobile phone, in, in TV and everywhere. And uh, these components are usually designed for so-called surface mounting so you are placing it on the substrate uh, usually using the 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 soldering process or using the conductive glue also it's possible and some of the components are light emitting diodes which are very useful and very often used in uh, smart textiles for making the some illumination or some visual feedback so they are em emitting light and they are blinking or, or lighting you can also have uh, such resistors or capacitors so it means electronic components or even sensors for example this is the temperature sensor which can be placed on the textile and works as a sensor device for for measuring temperature uh, the advantage of this technology is that all the components have the same dimensions and si same contact pads and if you want to place this component on the embroidery uh, substrate with, with embroidery pads, you have to design the pads which will fit the dimensions of these components. And all of these components have the dimension something like 3.2 times uh, 1.6 uh, millimeters. Uh, this is the, the, the typical or standardized dimension of the components with the dimension so-called 1206. And for that, you need to design the pads which have two millimeters uh, dimensions in X and Y, and the distance, the gap between them are also two millimeters. If you do it like that and place the component and fix it on the, on the contact pad, it's perfectly fit, as you can see there, and you can, you can make a nice contact on that. So the first example will be how to, how to, how to embroider this really very tiny, really very small, small pads. The first method how to do it is uh, really pretty easy just using the manual hatching or manual stitching uh, method so it means that you just draw some some outline of the of the pad and using the the line you will hatch it like like that i will show you later on how it will how it will be proceed so the advantage of this uh, method is that there is no significant increasing of the dimensions of the embroidered object so it means that you can really fit it to the such small dimensions like two times two millimeters uh, the advantage is also that you usually have small amount of thread so low consumption of thread and also you have the freedom in the filling design so you can draw it as dense as you want uh, or as you require uh, the advantage is that it takes more time so if you are if you are doing just only a few few uh, pads, it's no problem. But if you want to really make a huge uh, circuit, very complex circuit, it will takes a lot of time. On the right side, you can see the final embroidery of the hybrid conductive thread in the pad dimensions. How it will looks like. The second method, which can also be used, is the flat shape filling method, which is more sophisticated, I would say because you just draw the square or, or rectangular and use the functionality of the of the ink stitch uh, software or platform to fill the this area by by the thread 
The disadvantage usually is that you have higher consumption of the thread because it produces really dense filling. And usually if you are embroidering such small pets, you increase the dimensions of the embroidered object. So it means that it's bigger than it was previously designed. The, another thing is because there is quite a huge amount of the, of the thread, so it's uh, embroidering create elevated areas. So it means that it, it goes up from the, from the surface of the, of the textile substrate. And also it produces higher deformation of the textile substrate. So it means it's a recommendation for really small components, small pet to use something like manual hatching. And if you have the bigger uh, dimensions, it's a very beneficial to use the splash height filling method. So the another practical example uh, of the of the basic uh, embroidered pattern is uh, the contact pet of larger dimensions. We are usually using these uh, bigger pads for detachable connectors. Usually, uh, as a detachable, detachable collector, uh, connector, you can imagine snap fastener, real conventional snap fastener, uh, which you can put or press on the on the textile substrate and make the detachable connection because it's from metal, so it makes quite nice electrical contact, and you can connect through this uh, uh, snap fastener, for example, battery or other circuits, some, some evaluation circuit or some computed uh, unit. In that case, for example, you can see that there we have the embroidered heating element and there is some power bank as a, as a, as a power supply and using the cable and connectors, you have, uh, you have connected it into, into the heating element through the, through the uh, snap fasteners which are placed there in that, at, in that region. So, if you want to design and make this uh, this pad, uh, we decided to use contact pad with the dimensions 10 times 10 millimeters because it's perfectly uh, fit to the conventional snap fasteners. As you can see there, this is the type Roland baby snap fastener with the diameter 10 millimeters. And the gap between them is three millimeters. So if you want to embroider this type of basic pattern, you really need to have the functionality of the filling of, of this pattern by conductive thread because the, the thread has to be filled uh, all in, in this area and it's really time consuming to do it by the manual hatching for sure. So uh, there are, I will show you later on how easy you can, you can uh, fill this area by, by, by think stitch software. And what is essential and very important for, for, the, for the proper filling is to know the optical diameter of the thread, uh, which will be used for embroidering. In case of uh, conductive hybrid threads, which are very commonly used for that purposes, the optical diameter is something like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters. So it means that if you want to make a nice dense filling, you have to get between the individual rows of the filling, something like that dimension. So in, in, the, in the picture, you can see the, the filling of the, of the square pads using the running stitch two millimeter length. I will show you later on what does it mean. And the, the, the angle of lines is 45 degrees and degrees and, and spacing between rows is 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, this is the third example where I can show you what can happen when you are doing it in not proper way. So this is the design of uh, two parallel conductive uh, lines with embroidered uh, pads. And the, these three designs differ in a uh, different gap between these lines. In that case, it's a one millimeter, two millimeter or three millimeters apart. And the, the idea of this test pattern is to, to specify the sufficient distance of uh, these two parallel lines when you are embroidering uh, in, on, the, on the textile substrate. Because in case that the, the distance is not sufficient, you can have the short circuit between two conductive parts, which is not desired, which is not, not allowed.
Uh, there you can see uh, the, the results of the embroidering. So uh, if, you, if you see on the picture below, there you can see these three designs with the, with, with the parallel threads, with the gap one millimeter, two millimeter and three millimeter. And you can see that if you use the, just only one millimeter distance, you have in some particular places, you have the short circuits between these two conductive conductive threads. In case of two millimeter distance, it's no issue. So, so it's not nice, nice straight lines, but no, no, no short circuit. And if you use more than two, two millimeters, it's really very safe to, to use this distance without any troubles, without any problems. Uh, what is also important if you are drawing uh, and preparing more complex, uh, more complex designs, to draw the pattern exactly in the right order. It means in the order when you want to embroider it uh, after that. If you do it in the wrong way, so there could be some, some, some troubles, which I will again show you later on. So as a, as a recommendation, I would say it's advisable to choose the minimum distance between the parallel lines, which can be connected together uh, something like two millimeters to eliminate the risk of the short circuit. And this is the example I already said, if you want to, to draw this type of pattern. So it means that this is like six individual patterns, which will be embroidered one after each other. And if you embroider one, then the embroidering machine will automatically go to the another another part of the um, of the embroidered pattern then to the third part fourth part sixth part uh, and so on and if you draw it uh, in the in not proper order so you can uh, get into these troubles for example it's depicted there that if you want to have really not connected uh, not connected path so if the embroidering machine goes from the from this uh, pattern to this pattern so it stops the embroidering there make there such a so, so called lock stitch or tie stitch so so to 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 uh, to reduce to to lock the thread in place and and prevent it from the pulling out during the maintenance or during the washing but then it co continues there so so it puts the the the, the conductive thread to the another pattern and continues with the embroidering. And of course, after the final embroidering, uh, this part will be trimmed by, by the stickers. But if you do it don't, don't perfectly, so still there is, could be the risk of the short circuit. If you draw it in a different order, you can avoid this risky part, for example, like, like that. So you are embroidering it like that, and there is no risk uh, of, the, of the trimming and, and you can reduce this, this risk of the short circuit later on. So the message is that the order of the, draw, of, the, of the drawing and embroidering of the individual patterns is very important for technical embroidery. And usually it's not important for the, for the graphical embroidery or for, for the design embroidery. And now I can show you some practical demonstration in Inkscape and Inkstitch. So if you if you uh, download the, the Inkstitch software, I will show you. Uh, this is the, the basic or first, first uh, page where, where you can see it after the embroidering. And if you want to work it with, with that efficiently, it's usually very nice to have uh, such uh, grid. So you can also put there some, some grid, page grid, I will show it there. And if you are working, uh, with in, in millimeters and want to want to draw some some uh, objects in in millimeter scale it's great to set there not the pixels but the millimeters so I will put there the millimeters like that and now now we have the the page where you have the the distance between the between the individual parts or individual pixels in millimeters so the first task was to draw uh, the contact pads for small components. And as I said, it's two times two millimeters. So first of all, I can draw just the line, like a conductive, conductive pad there. 
and after that I can draw the two times two millimeters uh, square or as I said in the first example I can draw the the hatching the hatching principle so I will show you how to make the hatching uh, so we will at first draw just the line and then you will make the hatching of that but if you see it's fixing directly into the into the center parts of the of the of the grid so it's better to set it again in the document properties and find that there is a snapping snapping to the grid and you can also set the snap snapping only when the distance is some somewhere something like 10 10 percent of that so now it will be much easier to draw the proper proper circuit i will show you and i will make it a little bit bigger and i will draw the pad with the dimensions two times two millimeters but just by the easiest way how you can do it so my by manual by manual hatching so i will put it there like that okay maybe you can do it more precisely but for this practical demonstration it not such important okay like that i put the enter and you will have the pad with the dimension two times two uh, millimeters i will follow with the gap two millimeters and then continue again with the second pad for the for the placement of assembly component so like that And the final line there. So now you can see the two two pads which are which I want to embroider it later on. And now this is the, the this is the two D vector graphic design. And now I want to embroider it to the uh, so it means to prepare the the right exact stitches there. So for that purpose, I will use the extension uh, Ink Stitch. And if you already install it, you will find it in this uh, extension section. Uh, in this column, so ink stage, and there is a lot of different uh, commands and 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 parameters, I would say. But for us, it's important to to go through the parameter section and also for the visualization of that through the visualization section. So I will show you both. So first of all, uh, the parameters, and if you if you set the parameters, the 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 window, the new window will be opened. I believe, yeah. And there you can see uh, a lot of parameters, but what is more, the most important thing is the length of the stitch. So you can select the, the stitch, which is the diff distance between two needle points, I would say. So if you put there one millimeter or two millimeter, for example, you will see uh, the, how the, the, your pattern will be, will be stitched or embroidered. You can also set the, the another parameters I will show you later on. So if I am happy with that, so so with this with this design, I can apply it quit and quit. And later on, I can also show you in the again in the extension. So in extension, ink stage and visualization and report uh, export sorry the simulation. So if you click on that, the new window will appear and you will see how it will be the simulation of the embroidering. So you will see how your design will be embroidered later on. What is important in that visualization that you can also put there, oh, sorry, you can also put there the, the needle points. So you will be, uh, you will see exact areas exact exact places where the the needle will go through the textile and make the stitch and also you can put the realistic preview so the, it, it takes into account the thickness of the of the thread so you will see how it will be later on later on uh, embroidered you can also put there the the trims so the, this is the, the the areas there will be some 
where the trim will occur, automatic trim occur, or jumps in the program from one to another embroidery. So now I can go to the, some some more complex complex. Uh, I will close it to more complex test pattern, and it will be myself. Uh, it will be the the filling uh, of some area. So as as I said, it's possible to use this function. So I will just move it there and draw the square with the dimension uh, one centimeter times one centimeter. I can also put there the the some 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 conductive line there. And I can also draw another one with the distance of three millimeters, as I shown in my practical example, like that. It in the right dimensions. Okay, something like that. And again, you can put there another another contact contact pad as a conductive line. So this is the basic, basic and easiest, easiest uh, drawing again for for the for the example of large, large embroidery patterns. And if I will set and select this uh, this design and put it into the ink stitch parameters, so this will be more be important to for the setting of the parameters you want to embroider it. I think. So if you do it like that, so you will have some, some design of the filling, which is made automatically uh, by, by the software. So if you do nothing, so it will be embroidered like that. And you can see that there are some, uh, some extra stitches which are usually not welcome in the technical embroidery. So this is so-called this is so-called uh, underpath, which is sometimes used for the fixing the textile substrate and and reduce the the puckering and reduce the, the deformation of the textile during the, the embroidering. But in case of technical embroidery and if we have really really tough the textile substrate with high density, it's usually not welcome to have this kind of patterns. So in the in the autofill setting you can switch off the underpass and also this in this auto fill underlay, you can also put it out. So in that case, you will see that it's, we can say, more nice for, for the embroidering, that there are no extra stitches. And also you can see that at first it making the underlay stitches and after that in the, in the opposite direction it make the autofill stitches. And you can set also the parameters, the density of this stitching. Uh, first of all, you can set the, the 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 angle of the lines which you want to embroider. So in that case, it's a deg zero degrees. You can put there forty five, for example, and it will be uh, embroidered in that order. You can also set, if you want, you can also set the spacing between rows. So it means how dense it will be. So this is the the this is the exactly the the number which have to correspond with the thickness of the embroidery thread you are using. So if you do it like 0 0.5 only, so you will have less dense embroidering. So it means that there will be gaps between the individual threads which will be embroidered. If you do it more dense, something like 0 0.1, for example, then it produces very dense structure, probably corresponding with the, with the, with the very tough a uh, very thick and very tough uh, embroidered pad. In some cases, in extreme, it's also not possible to to go through uh, with, the, with the needle and, and can damage the whole uh, the whole embroidery. So it's very important to set proper parameters regarding the, the, the optical diameter of the thread itself. 
There are also other parameters. Maybe I don't know if there is a time for for the description of all of that. But maybe I would like to note only this un auto fill underlay. If you just switch it off, you will have no underlay. So it means the opposite direction embroidering below the final embroidering, and you make only this one uh, one layer of the of the threads on that. So you, if if I apply it, if I agree, and I am satisfied with that, I again can show you the the simulation of the embroidering. So I apply a quit, and again I will show you the an ink stage plugin, the the visualization and simulator, and then it will be opened. You will see how it will be embroidered. Again, I can put there again the, the realistic preview, which corresponds more with the final final uh, look of the of the embroidery. When I, I embroidered all, and see how it looks like. What is obvious in that in that embroidery that it make o makes only not only the the filling area but it make also the the outline stage as you can see there so around the, the whole pattern it makes the outline stage. If you don't need it or don't don't require this outline stage, you can select it and, and remove it if you want. And it's done by by the fill and stroke functionality so this is this is like an outline which is set it there so if it's set it there so you will see it depicted there and if you don't want to make it so you just click that you don't need any any stroke any any object outline and this is the same situation for this another another uh square and if i show you again using the the ink stage and parameters that there will be no outlining of the of the square after that so during the during the embroidering not outlining now it's also beneficial in some cases that you don't to to expand the the, the the itself pattern. So regarding this auto functionality, you can also see the function expand, expanding. So if you design the, the pattern and after the embroidery you, you 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 feel that it will be bigger than you suppose, you can reduce it like that and you will see that the, the, the final final picture or final design should be reduced, be, be, be smaller than in, in uh, the design. If you just put it minus, it will be smaller. If you put the plus, it will be bigger. So this is also what you can use in your design if you, if you require. Okay, now I would like to move to the another, another thing what is very important and it's the order, order of the of the design. So, for example, I will draw just using this uh, this simple line uh, the meander shape. So, so I will start there and draw the meander shape. Easy one, like that. So this is meander, and if you want to embroider it, you and by by conducting thread, you need to have like a one line, so which which will be embroidered in the in the right order from one one non-interrupted thread. But if you draw it the same pattern but using a not proper way, like for example that. OK, 
Okay, like that. So you can see that from the first point for, for the first look, it looks really absolutely the same. So don't care and you can embroider it. But if you really try to embroider it, you will see the significant difference. I will show you now how the difference looks like. So in the first case, it's OK. So it's embroidering like a one pass without any interruption, without any cutting and so on. But in case of the second embroidery, you can see that it's not what you really want. It's absolutely different pattern. And it's just only because you embroider it into different order, not optimal order. So it means that you embroider one line. So we are start, starting here and finishing here with the lock-in stitch. So it means with the, with, the, with the ending. Then there is the trim. You will follow there and continue to, till the point and till that point. Again, the stopping, trimming and continuing with the third, fourth and fifth line. So it means that there will be no one continual line, but five or six lines which are independent. In graphical embroidery, it's not an issue. It's no problem. But in case of the technical embroidery, if you want to have continue, continuous uh, design, continuous path, it's a problem because in that crossing areas, there should be probably not proper electrical contact between these two different threads. So in that case, you have two options how to handle with that. The first one is just to redraw the whole pattern. In, if it's, in, in many cases, it's easy, so you can just just redraw it or if it's more complex you have the functions which is so-called objects there and I, I have it open but you can open this in, in objects there and you will see if I just select you will see that it's really composed of this different path and you can make uh, changing the, the order of the of the lines if you want so I will show you as a practical example, just to to raise to top, check raise to top. Just a simple way. I will just put sequentially all these these objects to the top, and I believe that I did it well. And then you will see that it will change the order. Of the of the lines. So now, if I will embroider it, or try to embroider it, make the make the parameters. You will see that it makes it in the right order. Okay, I made a, one dis, one mistake there. Okay, I make some mistake, but. In principle, in principle, if you do it in the right way, so there is no problem, no problem with that. So you can you can remove it according to your according to your needs and set the right order of the of the of the draw patterns or draw lines, and then also to fit it to the to the to the embroidery. Also, what is also important, and maybe I that's why there is a problem of that is that also not only the order but also the ending and starting point of the of the of the line have to be taken into account so i will just show you maybe more easy more, more easier pattern like that and the second one which goes from from this to the to the middle point so if you embroider these two lines you need to have a just like a one one piece of, of thread which you want to embroider in one step. But if you again uh, in, in, in stitch show you how it will looks like, so you will be you will see that there will be the trouble because it will it will embroider first one and after that it will embroider the second I will make it shorter. So first one, then it moves to the end and go again into the middle point, which is not what we need. So if you just change the order of the line doesn't matter if the first or second i will do it with the, with the second line 
so where is this? The past and reverse. If you put this function into reverse, then you will see that it will be hopefully <laughs> embroidered in right order as you, as you want and as you as you as you, as you suppose. So first line and then it continues to the second line. That's exactly what you want. One continuous path without any interruption. So it means the message of that uh, is that you really uh, need to have the design with right order of the individual lines and also you need to uh, have the right direction of the lines you are drawing. So. What next? I would like to show you also that if you draw this design or this, this pattern as you like and you are satisfied with that, so you can uh, save it and in common way you are saving it like, like just some visual file, SVG for example. But in case you want to apply it for the embroidering, you have to select the proper uh, file format. So there you can see if you already have installed this uh, add-on into the into the Inkscape, so you will have special Ink Stitch files which you can select. And based on the embroidery machine you have, you have to select the proper format just easily. If you are using the Brother embroidery machine, you are using the PEST uh, PES file format. If you are using, for example, uh, Genome. Uh, embroidery machine or Melco machine, you are using this. Uh, if you are using FAP or different such as Tajima, you are again using the proper uh, file format. In case of our machine, Bernina, which will also uh, try to use it uh, during our practical, really practical course in, uh, in Maribor, uh, during the second intensive study program, we will take with us the the, our embroidering machine and Bernina and we will save all the all the designs in this Melco embroidering format because it's compatible with, with the Bernina embroidering machine. So you can just easily uh, select the proper format, save it and then you can transfer it through the flash card to the to the flash disk to the to the machine, put it there, install and and it will work. But if you want to be really perfectly sure if everything is okay with your embroidery, you can also use another function of the of the of the software or extension ink stage and use the stitch plan preview. This will transfer your this design into the into the design. Uh, in the exact uh, file format which will be used for for the for the final embroidering and later on you should see really the exact exact view of the individual stitches of the of the of your embroidery oh yeah okay that's it that's it it was it, it takes some time because probably my computer is quite busy with the with the transporting or this is the software and other, other software but now you can see the exact embroidering of that you can see the stitches and we can set really the two millimeter stitches so that's why the stitches are such long and there you can see also the filling of it so individual stitches this this round circles is the stitch stitch area and where uh, and how the the individual uh, threads will be placed so this is exactly what will be in the file uh, which will be sent to the to the embroidering machine. And maybe what can be also a little bit maybe confusing for 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 you that if you start with the with the embroidering parameters set it in that in that uh, in that um, uh, ink stage params that it's starting still with the zigzag, zigzag uh, style. It's because 
uh, every single line you draw has some thickness. So if you if you see if you see uh, this line and you will see this uh, fail and stroke functionality, so there is some stroke style and some some thickness of the of the line itself. You can see 0 0.265. Which correspond quite nice with the with our thickness of the of the thread. But if you change it to the different thickness, such as I don't know two millimeters, like that, and you have this really thick thick line, and put it into the into the ink stage, and set the parameters, you will see, and you will see how it will be stitched. So so that's the the zigzag zigzag stage. Because the the basic functionality of the ink stitch uh, is to uh, set the parameters of the stitching to to at, to to perfect to correspond with the visual in, impression of the of the draw pattern. So that's why the automatically fixing this, this stitch. And if you just change the 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 length of the stitch, you can you can set the parameters of the stitching itself. And it's very common if you have some such drawing with the thick lines that the stitching is using this zigzag shape stitching for filling the areas. So this is one example how you can make this uh, this filling of uh, wider objects. And the second one is so-called uh, satin tool, which can transfer the which, which can transfer the, the line into the into the uh, satin satin stitch. So it means very dense uh, zigzag shape. So if you transfer it, and I will show you later on how it will be embroidered. So it will be transferred into the two lines with this with this perpendicular line. But if you select it, you will see that it will make really nice a uh, nice fill zigzag shape as you can see this function can be used mainly for decorative purposes but for the technical embroidery it's very beneficial if you have for example two crossings of the of the thread and you cannot change the design of your of your pattern or of your of your circuit and you really need to have one crossing without any 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 short circuit then you can apply this uh, satin uh, line or satin filling for overcome the second second uh, conductive thread above the, the the bottom conductive thread and make some such uh, insulation bridge which can protect these two threads against the against the the short circuit so this is very, very useful and very, very often used uh, type of stitch in uh, in decorative embroidery, but in, in technical embroidery, usually we are not using it only, as I said, uh, when, when you need to make some dielectric bridge, for example. So maybe this is all what I wanted to show you uh, in real. So I will return back into the presentation and maybe if there are some questions regarding that maybe maybe if not i will before show again the video which will show you all uh, in brief what i already already showed you but very very fast in a very fast way and after that you will see also the practical embroidering of the of the design pattern so have a look and if you will have some other questions later on, I can I can give you. So again, briefly, then just the, just the basic setting of the of the of the parameters of of today. Some some drawing. How do you do it? That's for the This video is also the part of the of the video course. So you can every 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 time you want and you're able to do it.
down you can see how it will be transformed into the into the embroidered machine and how it will be embroidered. Frame you can use the graph of the photograph to divide the whole to the next in one direction and the embroidery of the photograph according to the design. And this is the final regarding design for the framing of the Okay, I will go further. So before I will I will put there the, the, the space for the questions if there will be some. So I would like to note it that this was really the basic part of the of the practical practical work. And the, the major part of the practical works will be done in Maribor for the next ESP. Uh, where we, as I said, we will bring all the necessary device and equipment for real embroidering. So there will be really the hands-on activities where you will try to embroider it, uh, the the designs from the rest three cases, which will be which will be be reported later on in the in the Maribor. And uh, I I can show you that the the case three. Uh, is the will be will be the embroidering or design and the embroidering of textile heating element, which is based on the on the textile, and this there this is emphasized on the on the precise and well defined value of electrical resistance because uh, if you want to warm up the textile to the particular temperature, you need uh, some uh, some uh, some jaw losses there which are done by the length of the embroidery pattern. So if you want to, to have the, the exact heating, you need to have the exact resistance, exact length of the pattern, and you will learn how to design and how to prepare the exact length of the, of the pattern to be heated up to the, uh, to the defined temperature. Case four deals with the illuminated fabrics, and there is the emphasis on the continuous conductive path creation which have more complex shape than I showed you, and the preparation of contact pads uh, for, for SMDs. So there you can see the example of such illumination textile, which is from the logo of Timsex, like O, and it's illuminated in that uh, nine, nine, nine places by the LED components, which are directly placed on the contact pads, which are uh, I shown you how to embroider it. And again, there are the big uh, contact pads which are used for the connection of some material. And the case five, which is also very, very interesting and nice, is the sensor, textile-based uh, water leakage sensor, which can detect the presence of the water on the textile. And this is emphasized, this uh, of, of, uh, emphasize of this of this example is for precise and defined gap between two uh, electrodes. Which are used as a sensor for for the water leakage. So because the di the, the 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 distance between these pads uh, is important for proper functionality of this humidity sensor or, or wet sensor, and uh, the any 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 short circuit between them is not 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 possible for the proper functionality of this of this uh, textile sensor. So these activities will be covered in the second or the next ESP, uh, in, in where you will have the knowledge how to how to draw and how to digitize the basic elements which are required for for this more complex circuit. So that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, there is still such few time for for that.